On Thursday, January 16th, smashers all around the world scurry to their favorite streaming device to watch Masahiro Sakurai unveil the final DLC character in Smash Ultimate's first Fighter's Pass. The Fighter's Pass was revealed over a year ago, slowly rolling out four characters so far, bringing the anticipation levels to a new high. Starting with Persona 5's Joker, every DLC character so far has represented a third-party gaming franchise, and many have been completely unexpected as well. Before the presentation stream aired, eager fans noticed a cryptic Twitter video from the team behind Devil May Cry, mentioning that January 16th, the same day as the Smash presentation, would be an important date for DMC fans to watch. This made many people believe that there had to be a connection, and that the DMC protagonist Dante would be the new DLC character. Nope. It was... Byleth. Hey, thanks for watching, guys, and make sure to subscribe to Pro Guides and click that- Okay, okay, so the presentation revealed that the final Fighter's Pass character was Byleth, the protagonist from Nintendo's Fire Emblem Three Houses. This came as a disappointment to many fans, as Fire Emblem is already a heavily represented first-party franchise in Smash Ultimate. Whether you're excited or disappointed, Sakurai and the devs put a lot of effort into making Byleth an interesting character that stands out among the other Fire Emblem reps. In his presentation of the character, we got a chance to see most of Byleth's moveset, and in this video, we're gonna share our perspective on every move and the character's overall viability. Make sure you guys check us out on our website, ProGuides.com. There you'll find our tier list, fully stocked with character guides and information, as well as our Play With Pros feature which connects you with experienced coaches. If that's not enough, we've even got exclusive pro courses with top players like MK Leo, so check out ProGuides.com as soon as you finish this video. So to analyze each of Byleth's moves, we'll be looking at the segment where Sakurai demonstrates the character in live gameplay. Unfortunately, the very first thing he says about Byleth is that their mobility is low. Sakurai goes on to mention that Byleth is only slightly slower than Robin, who is among the slowest characters in the game. Having slow movement is typically a sign of a weaker character competitively, but this is most likely referring to Byleth's ground speed, and it's hard to tell just how fast they are in the air. Wolf, for example, is very slow on the ground but has great aerial mobility, so he manages to be a top-tier character even with slow run speed. From here, Sakurai goes on to add that Byleth's grab lacks range, leading to his description of their distance demon archetype. I guess that's one way to make a zoner sound cool. Basically, he's saying that they have lots of range on their attacks and are designed to excel in the mid-range. Next, he moves on to talk about Byleth's default weapon, the Sword of the Creator, which they use for their jabs, tilts, up smash, up air, and up special. Looking at Byleth's jab, we can see that it starts with a close range punch and kick, which lead to a flurry attack with the sword's whip. This flurry is most likely a multi-jab, and it hits at a rather impressive range. Typically, it won't be worthwhile to go for a multi-jab if the initial hits aren't connecting, but the range on this move might make it useful for covering ledge options. Thanks to at Ruben underscore doll on Twitter, we actually have some frame data for Byleth's moveset. Please keep in mind that these numbers are all based on a pre-release demonstration video, so they may not be 100% accurate. Byleth's Jab 1 appears to come out on frame 4, which isn't particularly fast, but still quick enough for a range character. For reference, Cloud's Jab is also frame 4. Next, we get a look at Byleth's forward tilt. This move appears to come out on frame 8, making it a bit slow. It does, however, have quite a large range, hitting both in front of and seemingly slightly above Byleth. Depending on how much end lag it has, this forward tilt may be a good option to pressure shields, and it could have kill potential as well, similar to Ike's. It seems to have pretty good horizontal knockback, which increases the chances that it'll be a good KO option and hit opponents offstage. Here's Byleth's up tilt. It also appears to be a bit slow at frame 9, but it clearly has impressive range like forward tilt. This up tilt will almost definitely hit platforms above Byleth, and will likely be a great move to trap landings with as well. Byleth's down tilt also uses the sword's whip feature, sweeping across the ground. We see this move connect later in the video, and it appears to come out on frame 13, which is quite slower than we'd like to see for a move like this. Here we can see it deals 8 damage to Kirby, and it launches him straight upwards, likely having some combo potential. Sakurai shows this move seemingly comboing into both up B and neutral air later in the video, which doesn't look quite like a true combo, but it definitely has potential. Down Tilt seems like a good move to use in neutral thanks to its range and combo potential similar to Bayonetta's or Ike's Down Tilt, but its slow startup might hinder this utility. Next, we get a quick glimpse at Dash Attack. This move appears to come out on frame 9 and swings the sword in a downwards arc in front of Byleth. This dash attack seems like a pretty typical zone breaker option that can be used to approach aggressive opponents and catch faraway landings. From here, Sakurai moves on to show Byleth's up smash. 
This move twirls the whip above Byleth, starting with a sweep from the ground to catch opponents in front of them. It comes out on frame 13 and seems to last for a good amount of time. This up smash seems pretty similar to Zero Suit Samus's, and it will likely be a good tool for punishing landings and pressuring platforms. Up Air is shown next and uses a similar twirling animation to Byleth's up smash. The frame data for this move is unknown, but Sakurai mentions that it stays active for a while. It appears to have a considerable amount of landing lag, so this move will probably be better off used out of a full hop to potentially juggle opponents or apply pressure to high platforms. Byleth's up special swings the whip diagonally upwards and has the potential to grab opponents starting on frame 13. This move appears very similar to Joker's grappling hook also tethering to the ledge, although it can grab opponents while Byleth is in the air. If this happens, Byleth will actually pull the opponent downwards and jump off of them, resulting in a spike at higher percents. Sakurai shows that this move can be used at least three times in one offstage sequence, at least if the up B grabs an opponent for the first two times. The way this move works will actually make it very scary to edgeguard Byleth, as you might find your edgeguard reversed and get grabbed by it. This also means that Byleth can go for low edgeguards without much risk, as their up B can still snatch high recoveries from below. It's currently unknown if this move will be a true command grab that beats shields, but looking at Joker's up B and Isabel's fishing rod, we don't think it will. Sakurai then introduces the Lance Arid Bar, which Byleth uses for their side smash, side special, and forward and back aerials. Forward air swings the Lance horizontally forward and comes out on frame 11. This move has lots of range, notably outranging Marf's forward air, but doesn't cover much space vertically. Back air is a very similar swing that comes out on frame 13. The range on these aerials will help Byleth outspace most characters, but lacking vertical range will make them less versatile, like the Belmont's aerials. At frame 11 and 13, these are also quite slow. Byleth's forward smash thrusts the lance forward and can be angled up or down. This move comes out on frame 23, which is quite sluggish, and Sakurai shows that it's strongest at the tip. He also remarks that this move is stronger when angled up. The strong hitbox seems to be quite powerful for KOing opponents, and may be a great callout option to use at a safe distance similar to Corrin's forward smash. Next, we see Byleth's side special, which lunges forward with a huge upward swing of the lance. We don't know the frame data on this move, but it seems to be fairly slow, trading speed for range as with many of Byleth's moves. Sakurai mentions that a smash input can be used to achieve the lunge forward with this move, and also shows that it appears to deal little shield stun and shield damage. The aerial version of this move covers a large semicircle in front of Byleth, potentially compensating for the lack of verticality on Fair and Bear. This may be a dangerous edge guarding tool depending on how much aerial lag it has, but Sakurai mentions it's vulnerable to land with, so it will be risky to use this in the air as a juggling option. Now Sakurai moves on to the downward moves, which use the axe, a mirror. Down air swings the axe downward and has a strong spike hitbox, although it's quite slow at frame 22. This will likely be a deadly option against telegraphed recoveries like Fox's up B. Byleth's down smash comes out on frame 19 and hits both in front and then behind. It appears to be fairly strong, so this will be a faster, closer range alternative to forward smash used for hard punishes. It can also be used to cover options in tech chases because it hits behind Byleth as well. Sakurai then shows off Byleth's down special. Similar to Falcon Punch or Warlock Punch, this move is incredibly slow at frame 63, but hits extremely hard and can break shields. Byleth's down B also has super armor during its startup and can be directionally reversed or even dropped through platforms as well. This move has deceptive range, as there is a quake hitbox beyond the axe itself. Although this move's immense startup will give players time to easily react to and avoid it, it will likely still come into play in a few situations and potentially cheese people taking stocks at very low percents. Particularly at the ledge, this move seems a bit scary, because it appears to strike low enough to hit opponents while they're hanging. And by dropping through a platform or turning around, Byleth can cover ledge jumps or ledge rolls respectively. Finally, Sakurai introduces the Neutral Air and Neutral Special, which use the Fail Not Bow. Neutral Air spins the bow similar to Pit's Neutral Air and comes out relatively quickly on frame 6. It doesn't appear to have much range, but Sakurai mentions that certain combos may be possible with it, demonstrating the down tilt and the nair that we mentioned earlier. Byleth's Neutral Special fires an arrow with the bow. The arrow cannot be fired until it's charged for 45 frames, although it can be shield cancelled before then. It can likely be jump cancelled as well, potentially enabling some useful B-reverse movement options. The bow fully charges on frame 113, dealing almost 30 damage and tons of knockback. Landing even the uncharged version of this move seems a bit impractical in theory because it's just so slow. 
It may have some potential for edge guarding though, and it can apply a bit of long range pressure to opponents who camp. Overall, Byleth's moveset seems very similar to the Belmonts, with low mobility and immense range. In Byleth's case, the projectile factor is mostly replaced by gigantic KO moves like down B and side B. It's too soon to jump to conclusions, but with their range and KO power, Byleth seems much stronger than a low tier character, but held back by slow movement and poor frame data, they may not reach top tier. What do you think of Byleth? We'll have plenty more content regarding this character shortly after they release on January 28th, so make sure to subscribe to Pro Guides and turn on notifications so you don't miss a thing.